In today's Leeds news, Victor Orta speaks on his future, Andoni Iriola and Raul. This week's rumour mill with several players linked with Leeds. And Premier League clubs agree a shirt sponsor ban. Hiya folks, Jay here on Thursday for your Leeds news. Apologies for not getting a video yesterday, just a crazy day with work, I had a ton of stuff to get done, so I never got a chance to get near it, but um, there's plenty to go around. What I'm going to start doing from now until probably the middle of the summer is to start bracketing all the transfer stuff that looks like it's probably not real into a rumour mill territory, okay? Um, as with this channel, and I've always said it, this channel will cover whatever news is out there, whether it's rumour, fact, or, you know really out there kind of stuff but that's the whole point of the channel is take all the leads news from everywhere and bring it together in one place so that's what we're going to do so we'll, we'll crack on with this and we'll start off with Vic, with uh, victor orta and he's been talking a lot this week um and he's been talking with uh, spanish outlet relevo and what he has basically been saying he's been talking about his future at leads he's been talking about managers that were linked with leads and uh, people he's watching and it's been a really interesting eye-opening uh, interview and what he's been basically said starting off he's been talking about andoni areola that leads made a move for the Vallecano head coach earlier in february after jesse marsh was sacked it didn't happen it looked like it was going to happen then it wasn't then it looked like it might happen again and it didn't um and basically what he has said about this is when you fire a head coach, a lot of circumstances are generated internally. We knew how to carry out the process, and that process led us to the best possible port. Arta claimed in the interview that Ariola was the best possible option for Leeds as the head coach, which is an unusual thing to say when you've just put a new head coach in place. Um, I have concerns that Leeds might not do the right thing at the end of the season. Should we stay up with Garcia um, and keep him on? I have concerns about that, but... Um, it's an interesting way of, of bracketing this. He said that he learned from his time at Seville that when you analyze all the data and bring everything together, the direction it points you to is usually the correct direction. And in this case, it brought them to, to Areola. Areola has struggled with Vallecano since he's been linked with Leeds. He's having an incredible season before that. They were probably punching above their weight anyway, which shows the, the caliber of coach that he is. But they have struggled since since the link with Leeds. Which you can kind of understand. Carlos Corbran went through the same at West Ham, where maybe players just doubt the manager a little bit. You're like, you were linked. Yeah, you signed a new deal, but do you really want to be here? And it's it's apparently West Brom had a backup option for um, Corbran as well. So there's more information on that floating around. Uh, moving on then, talking about what he said about Raul, because Raul was linked, the Daily Mail linked Raul with Lee, the Leeds job and said that he actually turned it down. And at the time, I didn't believe it. I don't think anybody believed it at the time. It seemed like a really out of nowhere kind of claim and dismissed really quickly out of hand by Raul. But um, it turns out there might be more to it than, than, than I initially thought. And in this interview, Arta basically said about Raul, the following, mainly from an admiration as a player, and I have real relationship for his work as a coach. I have followed him a lot, and I've seen how he has been able to make a youth league champion team, which is something that did not happen at Real Madrid. He's basically talking about the work that he's done with the underage setup of Real Madrid and how, how great a job he's done there. He has a new coach with him as well that Arta knows pretty well and it says to have a connection with. Um, and it looks like he was trying to... This is one of those ones you, you classify as a project. Raul's a huge name in terms of a footballing name, but we've seen before that you know great footballers don't always make great coaches. Not to say Raul wouldn't be a great coach, but you were. I think he's looking at you know another project here where it's you know get the coach in before he gets a big, big job or gets the Real Madrid job and you know get all the benefits from him here. But uh, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Um, he also talking about his future quite a lot, and, and Seville came up, and he basically said that his long and medium term futures, long he doesn't know, but in the medium term, he is looking at heading back to Spain. I think this all lines up with the 49ers takeover potentially in the summer. If that does go through in the summer, then you're looking at a position where Orta may decide to head back towards Spain. He has been talking about the links that keep being popping up with him in Seville, and he's being viewed as the long term replacement to, to Sevilla's director of football, Monchi. Um, and he even says it himself, he doesn't know if he is the replacement for Monchi or if they're going to bring him in or not, but in the medium term, he sees his future as going back to Spain. He said, from a weather perspective and just from a personal health, he has got a lot of abuse from Leeds fans, me included. I have directed a lot of stuff at him. I don't like his antics in the press, but not the press box. I don't like his antics in the, in the, the director's box. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. I like my director of football to act professionally. And um, you know what job you're in. You're in a football job. He's been around before. You know fans will, will give you a bit of stick if it's not going well. You know Act accordingly. One thing I'll say about Angus Kinnear, as much as I, I accuse him of being a gaslighter at the time, Angus Kinnear always acts professionally in, in the in the, the corporate boxes and you know ignores the noise around him and unfortunately victor can't and um, 
However, what I will say about Victor Rorty, he's got a fantastic eye for young players and some of the new players he's brought into Leeds have been fantastic and he did help to broker the deal to get Bielsa in. Whether it was accidental or deliberate, he got him. But um, he took a lot of credit for a lot of stuff he shouldn't take credit for. That's, that's, that's my take on him. But it's not to say if you look at the young players that are coming through Leeds that he hasn't put an incredible youth set up together. He has. He really has. That, for me, is where I'd like to see him stay. I'd love to see him be like the head of youth development at Leeds or something like that and not a director of football. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let's move on. Let's talk about the rumour mill because this is going to be a long one today and we've got to get through this. So let's start off with all of this. All of these players are a pinch of salt therapy. Some more than others, and you'll understand when I get to them. Start off with the first one. And according to Ekram Koner, who will pop up a bit on this, uh, he has said Leeds are amongst a host of clubs that are looking at Lorient's 23-year-old midfielder, Enzo Lafie. Uh, Lafie is having a pretty decent season this year. He's 23, has played 128 games so far for Lorient and has come through their youth system. Leicester, Fulham, Wolves and Villa are all said to be interested in the midfielder as well. He fits the right age demographic for Leeds and a player coming through. Should Leeds lose maybe one or two of their midfielders in the summer if Adams moves on, you know. Is there an option to bring a younger player through? I think that's what we're talking about here. Five foot seven, he's come through the Lorian UTSEP, as I've said. But Leicester Fulham Wolves are all said to be interested in the player as well, who will cost roughly £20 million. Not a massive fee, but for a younger player, maybe so. He definitely fits that um, that bracket. He is a 23 year old in the field. I think I might have said 21, but he's 23. Capped at French under 20 and under 21 level, and also represented the French Olympic team as well. So good pedigree there. Uh, moving on to the more out there kind of ones. And Manuel Ugarte has also been linked with Leeds. And this is coming from Portuguese sports newspaper Ojago. And what they have said are Leeds are amongst a host of clubs, again, interested in the sporting CP midfielder. Uh, they reported last week that Aston Villa, Wolves and Newcastle are also said to be keeping an eye on the player. The 21-year-old has got interest in Italy from AC Milan and Roma as well. Uh, his performances in the Europa League are what has stood him out to teams, especially against Arsenal. He was sent off in that game an extra time. Um, however, he has a £52 million release clause to, if you want to go and get him. Sporting are notorious for putting very large release clauses on younger players especially. They don't think that the, the, the news outlet here say, they don't think they would be expecting to receive that kind of money for him, but that is the initial kind of buyout clause. If you want to bypass all the paperwork and go straight to buyouts, there you go. Follow the Chelsea model. Give them what the buyout clause is and get on with it. Uh, it's a huge amount of money, and I don't think it's something that needs to be looking at at that level, but you never know if they can get it for cheaper. All depends on contract situations as well. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Victor Gio Correa or Victor Guy Koresh, whatever way you want to pronounce this. The player himself has been linked with Leeds repeatedly, repeatedly, over the last couple of months and he has finally spoken or in this case not spoken it's a weird one about his connection with Leeds he was asked about links to Leeds um, and he has said that these are just rumours we'll see what happens in the summer he is aware of the Leeds United links he said player scored 18 goals this season is one of the top goal contributors all up I think it's 26 full goal contribute contributions contributors contributions contributing to 26 goals this season uh, all up for Coventry and having a great season 17 goals last season for him as well so good pedigree there and I'm doing pretty well for Sweden as well so uh, he has been continued to be linked again as he said we'll have to wait till the summer to see what happens there moving on let's talk about Rio Hitate I like this one this is one I like uh, Rio Hitate the Celtic central midfielder Japanese midfielder has been linked again with some clubs Leeds West Ham and Brighton are said to be interested in a Celtic midfielder 25 year old has been a mainstay in Celtic's midfield since joining the club and as somebody who watches an awful lot of Celtic games I really like him he would give Leeds a huge amount of attacking energy going forward he is an incredibly fit player covers a huge amount of ground in midfield and has goals and assists in his locker as well and some pretty spectacular ones his positioning is excellent I would be a massive fan of this if Leeds got it done again it's not a midfielder Leeds have got lots of options in midfield but we've seen this week with injuries to Tyler Adams that all of a sudden it gets a bit weaker you need to have more options in there he's 25 years of age he's a good age it'd be the right time to get him in he has now got some experience in scotland which will help him when he comes into england if he comes into england but a lot of clubs are starting to keep an eye on him now so keep an eye on that one um i like it that they would love to be us to be the club that gone uh this is the one that's really out there Giancarlo ramos uh, Giancarlo Ramos has been linked with the club and according to Ben Jacobs, he has a £120 million release clause in his contract. Uh, Leeds, along with Manchester United Newcastle, are keen on the Benfica star. They don't reckon that the £120 million would be a fee that clubs will pay or get him for. They reckon it's more realistic to be in around £45, £50 million, which again is probably way outside Leeds price bracket, depending on what happens in the summer with relegation or promotion, sorry, relegation or staying in the league. 
and the 49ers coming in as well. So we have a bit to look at there. So we'll wait and see. Uh, and then finally, we'll move on to the Premier League clubs have agreed to a voluntary short sponsor ban on gambling companies. Uh, this is according to the Times. The Premier League clubs are about to agree to a voluntary ban on gambling companies appearing on the front of their shorts. The wording of this is very important. The front of their shorts not the full shirt. This doesn't include sleeve deals, which would still be permitted under this white paper. And um, the UK government's white paper is uh, due to be published later this month. And it's not to include championship clubs or below or sleeve or back of shirt sponsorship. It's only for the main sponsor on the front. A final vote is said to possibly be held off with Premier League clubs until the Premier League chairman meets in June once the season is over. Um, it's the, basically the government have said that they won't include the gambling shirt ban in the white paper if the Premier League clubs agree to a voluntary ban on it. One of the uh, club officials has said that gambling sponsorship is the most lucrative sponsorship out there for clubs, which is why it's so prevalent in the Premier League and other clubs. Um, and he said that they offer between five to ten million pounds per season to clubs, so you can understand why there's a, there's a benefit there. This might actually help championship clubs close the gap financially on some Premier League clubs. Um, it doesn't apply, as I said, the teams in the Championship League one are, are down the pyramid as well. But you could just see the sponsors move from here to here and then a different sponsor coming in. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. The clubs are said to have agreed to it. Eight out of 20 clubs currently have gambling companies as their front of short sponsor, Leeds being one of them. Folks, that's going to be it. Bumper edition today. Loads of stuff to talk about. There's more tomorrow and we'll get to that. Um, might be live tonight with the American Elite podcast as well on Alex's channel, but I'll put a post up on the community tab once I, that's been scheduled. I'll let you know. And we will be doing a match preview on Friday. We won't be doing the press conference today. I'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya. Bye.